Hey everybody, it's Will here from Singletrack Magazine and Singletrackworld.com. And I'm currently on a trail local to the Singletrack office in Tobberton, and I have with me here this bike. This is the Solaris Max from Kodak Bikes. Now this bike is brand new for 2018. We've been testing one for the past two months and you can now read the full review on Singletrackworld.com. Kodak has actually had the Solaris in its lineup for about five years now, and this one here represents the third generation of the platform. It's still a 29 inch steel hardtail, and in terms of where it sits in the Kodak lineup, you could kind of look at this as a big wheel version of the Sol, or perhaps alternatively as a hardtail version of the Flare Max. Whatever way you choose to look at it though, there is no denying that this is a properly rapid hardtail. Now let's go through some of the basics on this bike. It uses a steel frame and we have Reynolds 853 tubing for the front end. That includes a 44 millimeter head tube up front and a fat 34.9 millimeter seat tube. Both of those are designed to add a lot of stiffness to the chassis, which it needs because as you can tell by the top and down tube, this bike is enormously long. I'll go into a little bit of detail about that shortly. Out back we have 4130 Chromoly stays. These are nice and shapely to give plenty of tire clearance. Uh, Sintase X12 through axle, threaded bottom bracket shell, ISCG 05 tabs, and probably one of my favorite features, almost entirely external cable routing, which is really nice if you're working on gear cables or changing brakes around as we have. Now the biggest change on this Solaris Max compared to the previous version is no doubt the geometry. Kodak have implemented what it's calling long shot geometry. Long shot essentially refers to a much longer front center on the bike. How long you ask? The answer is bloody long. This, this bike is enormous. The medium that I've been riding has a reach of 463 millimeters. Uh, now to put that in perspective, that's actually longer than the previous version's extra large. So it is absolutely enormous. Kodak's even added a small frame size back into the Solaris lineup. The small still runs a reach of 440 millimeters, which is pretty similar to a lot of other brands' medium frames. So, uh, so yes, it is very, very long. And that's paired to a really short 35 millimeter long stem. This stem comes on the small, medium, large, and extra large frame sizes. So each frame is designed to run the same bar and stem. Now, other geometry figures on this bike, uh, we'll talk about the head angle and seat angle, which Kodak actually measures with the suspension fork at SAG uh, to simulate a rider being on board. So at 25% SAG, you're looking at a 66 degree head angle on the front, which is very slack, a 74 degree seat angle, which is quite steep. And in terms of the rear center length, that is 444 millimeters, which is really quite long, particularly when a lot of other hardtails are going as short as possible. Kodak of actually going the opposite way and extending the rear center. That combined with the long reach, the slack head angle, gives this bike a huge footprint on the trail. You're talking nearly a 1200 millimeter wheelbase, which is huge. And that gives this bike a load of presence and a load of stability on the descents. Up front, we've got a 120 millimeter travel fork from X-Fusion. This is the McQueen HLR. It's got independent high speed and low speed compression damping, rebound damping, air spring adjust, and you can even adjust tokens inside the uh, air spring as well. So loads of adjustability. Now with the new Solaris Max, Kodak has increased the available fork travel you can fit to this bike. So although ours comes with a 120 millimeter fork, you can fit up to a 140 millimeter. Obviously that'll slacken off the angles and it will lift up the BB height a little bit as well. And I can only imagine how much faster this bike will go with a longer fork on it. Like the Solaris Max before it, this model is also compatible with 27.5 inch plus wheels and tires. There's room in the back for a 27.5 by three inch tire. Right now I've got 29 inch wheels in here and we've got 2.6 inch rubber. Um, that is very, very high volume and the Bontrager SE4 tires that I'm currently running do measure true to size. So these are a proper 2.6 inch tire and there's steel clearance in the back for mud, which is really nice. Uh, you could potentially go a little wider again if you wanted at your own risk, um, but I think this 2.6 is probably about the limit that you can fit in the back of the Solaris Max. As for the build kit, the bike is a little bit of a mishmash, and that's because I've been testing a few other parts on this bike, including a SRAM NX Eagle 1x12 drivetrain and Guide T brakes. Um, in terms of the cockpit, I have made a couple of adjustments. I wasn't really a big fan of the Kodak branded saddle and grips, so I've replaced that with a Pro Griffin saddle, which is much flatter, much more my style. Um, and I've also fitted on a pair of DMR death grips. These are the slim diameter um, in the soft compound, and they are fantastic. 
Uh, the cockpit itself is really roomy. As you can imagine with that big long reach, there's plenty of space to move around on. I really like Kodak's branded handlebar and stem. We've got a 780 millimeter wide riser bar paired to that short 35 millimeter stem. Very comfortable um, and not too stiff either. Kodak actually developed this bar and stem specifically with a 31.8 millimeter diameter because a lot of their vendors are moving to 35 millimeter diameter bars and stems, uh, which Kodak believes is too stiff um, and also just looks a bit weird with the skinny steel tubing on this frame. Right, so how does this bike actually ride? In terms of cruising along and climbing, it's a pretty unassuming steel hardtail. It's not the lightest bike in the world, so it's not gonna set any comms on the climbs. However, it is really comfortable to climb on, and a lot of that has to do with the big open cockpit that gives you plenty of room to move around on. Um, you never feel cramped on this bike, um, even as you're going up steep fire road climbs. Um, so quite comfortable, um, but it gets even better on technical single track climbs. Uh, there's a load of traction from these big tires, so that helps when the trail surface gets a bit rough and loose. Um, but because of that long rear centre, that 4440mm chainstay length, this bike is actually really planted on the climbs. I wasn't expecting that because it is quite slack and you do have that short stem there and typically that results in quite a light and potentially wandery front end. But because this bike has such a long wheelbase, it stays really steady and it stops the bike from kind of tipping backwards when you're going up really steep pinches. So technical climbing is actually really good. There's a good amount of pedal clearance too, so even when it's quite rutty and washed out, there's still clearance there for the pedals to, uh, to kind of claw your way up really steep pinches. Um, where this bike shines though is on the descents. That's where this new long shot geometry and those big 29 inch wheels come into their own. It is really, really fast. You get it on rough, rocky terrain, let off the brakes, and it builds momentum very, very quickly. Thanks to that slack head angle and long wheelbase, it's very steady and very calm in situations where a hardtail probably shouldn't be this calm. In fact, I surprised myself on a load of regular descents that I would normally ride on much longer travel full suspension bikes. Um, with how fast the Solaris Max can travel down those same descents. One thing I did have to work on though was preemptive braking because there are situations where you end up coming into a corner or the, uh, the bottom of a descent going way too fast than you should be. But because this bike is so calm and steady in those situations, it doesn't let on that you're going that fast until perhaps it's too late. So I did spend a bit of time relearning uh, my braking points and working out when to slow down, and when to rein this bike in, because if you let it off the hook, it'll charge as fast as you're willing to let it. As for cornering, I was pretty surprised actually with how well the Solaris Max goes through the turns. It is a really big bike, it's quite slack. Normally you'd expect a 29er with that kind of geometry to be a lot of hard work through the tight stuff. Surprisingly, that's not the case. Kodak have got the handling spot on with this bike. Now on wide open, flat corners coming out of long straights, um, it does require a bit more work to kind of carve the bike through those turns because there is so much momentum in the wheels and in the bike itself when you're kind of steaming along. Um, get it into the tight stuff though and you'd be surprised with how well this cuts through those turns. A lot of that has to do with weight distribution. You're positioned right in the middle of the bike and like a mid-engine sports car, that actually makes it relatively easy to change direction and also change your weight distribution on the front tire to the rear tire. So if you can feel one actually starting to give through the corner, it's quite easy to move around on the cockpit, shift your weight and get grip back onto that tire so you can keep on your line. So although it is a big bike, surprisingly, it gets through corners really, really well. It just takes a few rides to get used to it. But once you do get a feel for that weight distribution and how much traction there is in these tires, you can really, really rail corners hard and fast. So for me, there were very few downsides sides to the long shot geometry on this bike. I guess one of the uh, potential downsides is the seat angle. I would like to see this a little bit steeper. I've had to slam the saddle as far forward on the rails it was, as it will possibly go. Um, that's, that has actually steepened the effective seat angle, um, but I'm at the limit and uh, for anyone else out there that would want to go steeper again, you, you basically don't have any more room to move. So, so I'd like to see the seat angle perhaps a degree steeper just to bring that saddle a little bit closer to the grips. Um, but with the saddle in its current position, I've had no issues with comfort or with getting the power down on the climbs. So overall, this geometry and this bike as a whole has really impressed me.
Now, if you'd like to read a bit more about this bike, then you can jump on singletrackworld.com to read the full review on the new Solaris Max from Kodak Bikes. In the meantime, if you've got any questions about this bike, including how it's gone with 27.5 plus setup, pop them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Otherwise, thanks for watching guys. Hope you've enjoyed. We'll see you next time. Two root.